Hello friends, I am Professor SRK and you are watching Science for Juniors. Here comes a Barbie with a doll. <laughs> oh Professor! Don't tell me you brought this for me. <laughs> oh no Professor, this is for my friend. She was suffering from typhoid. She can now play with us so... Oh typhoid, a waterborne disease. Benny, you two should take care. Don't drink water from any unsafe source. Water? I'll take care, Professor. But how is water and any disease related? <laughs> they are related, Binny. How? Let me slowly answer all your doubts and impart you some knowledge on water pollution. Let us explore the virtual world for that. In this module, you learn about what is water pollution, its causes and harmful effects. Do you know that pollution of water is the primary cause of waterborne diseases like typhoid, cholera or dysentery? Water pollution is the change in chemical, physical and biological composition of water. The pollutants can be of biological origin like parasites, bacteria or viruses. Pesticides, detergent, salts, oil-based products and fertilizers are examples of pollutants of chemical origin. One of the concerns for coastal and marine environment is oil pollution. Oil spills occur from oil tanker collisions, seepage from offshore oil wells and flushing from tanker holes. Thermal pollution is the discharge of heated water into a water body which causes a rise in temperature of water. Water used as a coolant in industrial processes when let out into the water bodies also causes a rise in temperature, endangering aquatic life. Untreated sewage disposal causes major health problems. Typhoid, cholera, dysentery, infectious hepatitis and schistosomiasis are the waterborne diseases that can occur when excreta is allowed to be deposited into water in the form of sewage. Also, malaria, yellow fever and filariasis are transmitted by insects with aquatic larvae. Nitrogen compounds and phosphates present in sewage increase the amount of plants in aquatic ecosystems. If plants increase in number and there is no increase in the consumers of them, then the plants will die and decompose. This reduces the soluble oxygen levels in the water. Oh! If the water is so polluted, how can I assure that the water which comes at my home is safe to drink? Hmm, that's a concern. Let us perform an activity which will help us determine that. Sure, Professor. Let's do it quickly. I don't want to fall sick. First of all, pour the drinking water in a glass. Then observe and note the following. Is the water yellow or blackish? Uh, no. Does it have a stinking smell? Not at all. Can you see any floating particles in the water? No, no, no particles here. <laughs> if answer to any of the question had been yes, then the water is not safe and you should inform the municipality corporation about it immediately. Professor, I'll surely perform this activity today for water at my home also. Hmm, and let me know the result. Now let's zoom into the virtual world to know more. The extent to which a water body is polluted is measured by biochemical oxygen demand or BOD. BOD measures the amount of oxygen needed to break down the organic matter in a water sample in a fixed period of time. A higher BOD means higher levels of water pollution. Let us study the effects of varied oxygen levels in a river. Oxygen levels are lowest immediately below the pollutant 
as the decomposers metabolize waste materials. Organisms which tolerate low oxygen level are found here. Further downstream from the pollutant in anaerobic water, one can find invertebrates and microorganisms which can live at low oxygen levels. Finally, when all nutrients in the water are exhausted, the decomposer population will decrease, increasing the oxygen levels which will support clean water organisms again. Water-soluble nitrates and phosphates present in fertilizers stimulate the overgrowth of producers in the aquatic environment which affects the ecosystem. This is eutrophication. These nitrates and phosphates are removed from the effluents before releasing them into the waterways. Sewage treatment plants also get rid of pathogenic microorganisms from the sludge and the effluents. Thus, sewage treatment plants aid in controlling water pollution. After sewage is treated, the effluent is released into the water waste. The nutrient-rich, non-contaminated sludge is used as a fertilizer. Methane gas produced during the decomposition of sludge is used to generate electricity. Oh, this means sludge can also be useful. Yes, Binny. Sludge can be used as compost in the farmlands too. Hmm. What happened? Professor, I'm confused once again. Like on one hand we say it is useful and on the other hand we say it is harmful. Don't stress your small brain cells too much or it may numb them completely. <laughs> Let me explain in detail. Oh, okay. On that note, let's enter virtual world again. Let us learn about water pollution by inorganic waste. Inorganic waste is waste consisting of material other than plant or animal matter. The sources of inorganic water pollution are toxic chemicals and runoffs from urban areas containing harmful chemicals, pesticides and household chemicals, industrial discharge and spillages. Water is also polluted by heavy metals such as mercury, lead, cadmium and nickel. Non-metallic salts such as selenium and arsenic and byproducts of industrial processes such as acids. Herbicides are used to kill weeds. If they are washed into streams in rivers, they cause pollution. The non-degradable pollutants are absorbed by plants and planktons and get circulated through the food chain as they are stored in animal tissues. When this prey is consumed by the predators, the concentration of toxic substances increases. This increase in harmful substances per trophic level is known as biological magnifications or amplification. Binny? Binny? Oh, um, I'm sorry, Professor. I was just having a look at the water closely. If it is safe to drink, I just realized it's too important. Yeah. Now, would you like to know some more interesting stuff? Sure, Professor. Okay. Then let me tell you about some more interesting facts. Do you know, Binny, why manhole covers are round? No, Professor. They are round to avoid accidents. Actually, there are two aspects to it. Firstly, architects have researched and found that the grip of a round structure is far more long-lasting than any of the edged figure like triangle or rectangle. Secondly, as manholes are located in public places of regular use, the edges in a triangular or rectangular structure might be dangerous for pedestrians as well as vehicles. A round manhole is smooth and hence prevents any such accident. Ooh. Also, have you heard of oil spill, Binny? Oil spill? <laughs> you always surprise me. Oil spill is intentional or unintentional release of oil into rivers and oceans. The Gulf War oil spill was one of the worst oil spills in the history resulting from actions taken during the Gulf War in 1991. 
it caused considerable damage to the marine life in the Persian Gulf. All right, friends, it is now time to dive again into the pool of information. Let's have a quick recap of what we have learned today. In this module, you have learned the following. Water pollution is the adverse change in chemical, physical and biological composition of water. The pollutants can be of biological origin like parasites, bacteria or viruses. Pesticides, detergent, salts, oil-based products and fertilizers are examples of pollutants of chemical origin. Oil spills occur from oil tanker collisions, seepage from offshore oil wells and flushing from tanker holes. Thermal pollution is the discharge of heated water into a water body causing a rise in temperature of water typhoid, cholera, dysentery, infectious hepatitis and schistosomiasis are the waterborne diseases. Malaria, yellow fever and filariasis are transmitted by insects with aquatic larvae. The extent to which a water body is polluted is measured by biochemical oxygen demand. Sewage treatment plant uses the natural decomposition process of microorganisms to reduce organic matter in sewage. Some of the sources of inorganic water pollution are toxic chemicals, pesticides, industrial discharge and spillages. Heavy metals, non-metallic salts and products of industrial processes also pollute water. I'll not let even my Barbie to drink contaminated water. Also, we'll ask my friends to check water before drinking. Hmm, while Benny teaches all of this to her Barbie, it's time for me to say goodbye. Bye-bye, friends. See you again in the next episode of Science for Juniors. Bye.